Hello, welcome to this video. Still looking at Padlet. I've done a few reviews of Padlet in the past, but it's been a while since I looked at it, so I thought it was worth another check. So this is Padlet. I've logged in. As with lots of these sites now, you've got a variety of different subscription models. So just if you want to find out more about plans and pricing, at the time of recording, this is the offer. So the free account offers you a maximum of three Padlets with a, a maximum of 20 megabytes upload. And you can see the other options are there. With regards to accounts, it's a one user account. So you can see the different options that are available. So let's go back and have a look at what they've changed. So I guess the first thing is you can go to gallery and you can see suggestions on how you can use it. Now I'm using the education category, but you've got a general category and you've got a business category as well. And that gives you suggestions on layout. So let's jump back to education and you can see I've got a variety of different options and that's going to restrict the type of, of content you can upload. So for example, if I was to choose Art Showcase, it's going to allow mainly pictures to be uploaded as opposed to text. So I'm going to go with 3 to one Summary uh, and it's giving you a, a suggested layout. So three things you've learned, two things you want to know and one question you still have. So really nice exit ticket activity. We can click Create and then it gives you um, some examples of, of information that you may want to give to the students and how to use this. So you can see it's going through really nice guide. So, uh, asking about adding a lesson, suggesting you add a lesson title. It then says how you should use it after the lesson using the share feature and the QR code and then providing students with some instructions. So you can see it's doing that. Generate a sample post. So you can see it's giving you a sample post all done uh, to help get a flavor of what's what. So it's a really good example to provide sample posts because students then know what things they should be adding. So there's an example there. So we can get rid of that. So I'll click done. On the outside menu, once you've created a Padlet, you've got various options here. So you can click to reuse the Padlet. You can set up notifications. You can open a slideshow to see all of the posts that have been made. If you come to the cog, you can open the Padlet settings and you've got various tabs across the top. So you can change the wallpaper. You can alter the color scheme at the moment. This is light, but some students may prefer the dark mode. So you can change to dark. You can also alter the font style. I kind of like that simple font. I think it's easier to read. And you can also alter the, the post size, whether it be standard or wide. And then from a layout perspective, you can choose how it's laid out. So this is wall. If I change it, that's canvas. So they're all on top of each other. Go down again. You've got timeline. So you can see them being laid out in timeline. Uh, and grid. So you've got a whole range of different ways of viewing it. My, my preferred option is wall, if I'm honest. I like that view. And then you've got the option new post positions. You can work out where things are. And you've all could also show who has who is the author and when they added something to it. So useful to see who's adding what and when. And you've got moderation features and remakes. So who has the option to remake that Padlet. So you can set it to everyone or you can specify only admins. So there's some of the engagement settings. If we scroll back up, um, you can see you can either just click directly to the menu to go to the item or you can scroll up and down. And as you scroll down, it changes. So lots of settings and customization available there. When it comes to posts and titles, we can add new sections on left or right. We can also rename a section. So I wanted to rename this. I can do that. If I want to move things around, I can also do that. I can move section left or I can move section right. So I can really customize how it's laid out. I can add additional sections if I wish. I can also search for posts that have been made. If there's a particular topic or keyword I want to use, I can search for those. When it comes to collaborators, I can choose what visitor permissions have. So we've got the option of no access, reader, which is great if you're using it for student resources. So you pull together all your resources for the lesson, shove them on a Padlet. You want students just to read them. 
You can add commenter so they can comment on a post or writer, as it says there, you can have new posts. So that's really useful. Uh, link privacy, so at the moment it's secret, secret with a password, secret with a logon or public. I think it's all self-explanatory. Um, collaborators, this is where you're restricted. With a free account, you can't add a collaborator. Um, and then what you can do is you can either link to it or you can get a QR code or you can view all of the posts as a slideshow, which is really useful at the end of a session or beginning of the following session. When it comes to, to saving your contributions, you can save them as an image, you can export them as a PDF or save them as a CSV or as an Excel spreadsheet. Lots of ways that you can save what's being contributed. So I could click get QR code and that will generate a QR code which students could then scan to access the Padlet. I'll close that. Or I can just simply copy a link. So I've copied the link. I'm going to bring up a addition, uh, another uh, inst instance of Google Chrome. And I'm going to paste that into there. And then this is what others would see. So I've got, um, I'm now contributing just as an anonymous character. So you can see I've got the little ant there. If I click plus, I can add my response. I'm just going to put hello and I can click submit and it will add that there. I can choose to to do a variety of things. I can make it a different color. I can edit the post or I can add before or after or I can delete the post. So there we have it. So that's what it looks like from uh, someone else viewing it. But it's a great way to get students collaborating with you or you collaborating with colleagues as part of a workshop. And I love the fact you can export content into a PDF so you've got a record of it going forward. We'll jump back to the final thing. If we then come back to Padlet Home. This is what it looks like. So if I go home, you can see all of my recent Padlets. You can see how many Padlets I've got used. You've also got the option to, to favorite certain Padlets. You can view Padlets that have been shared with you. And when you finish with a Padlet, having downloaded it as a PDF, you can then delete it so that you can reuse another Padlet. So you can see I've now got two or three available. So I hope you found the video useful. If you did, remember to subscribe to the channel. Do check out my Alternatives to Google Jamboard playlist, which is linked above. And I'll see you again in another EdTech video soon. Thanks for watching.